America's symbol of excellence in sports entertainment. Got Mark 76 this week, 1990. Going to work on the back of Sting. He needs to make a tag in the knee to the back of the head. Flair trying to cheer on Sting. Sting getting back up by uh, Anderson. And the fireman's takeover takes over Anderson. Now's a chance. A big elbow to the top of the head. Sting makes the tag. And here comes Flair. Flair in the ring. Flair going to win. Wait, Flair. Flair just took out Sting. Flair just took out Sting. Championship Wrestling, I am your host, Scott Mark, 76. I am still in shock at what we saw last week at Capital Combat 9, the return of Robotop. We saw just a highlight at the top of the program. It was a setup all along. Nature Boy Ric Flair rejoining the original horsemen of Tully Blanchard, Arn Anderson, and Barry Windham. And I think we all have some major questions regarding that situation. And as we start off today's show with the Stephen Brothers taking on the Samoa SWAT team. Major questions that, that I personally have are why was this drawn out? If Ric Flair wanted to rejoin the original horseman, couldn't he have just told Sting that his affiliations lied elsewhere and that he wanted to be loyal to his older friends? I think this all, and this is just my opinion, I think this all spawned from when Sting beat Flair for the World Cup anniversary. I think Ric Flair had every intention of maintaining a friendship and a relationship with Sting until Sting defeated Flair for the world title at WrestleMania. And I'm sure we will be hearing from the Horsemen. They are in action. Ric Flair will be taking on the Great Muda in our main event. Sting is not here. At the conclusion of that match, Sting took multiple pile drivers. He is not seriously injured, but the doctors have advised him to take off the next week or two. Rest up and find no sting. He does not want to stay at home. He wants to get his hands on Nature Boy Ric Flair. And he may just be able to do that. At the Clash of the Champions on June 15th, we have our next big event coming to the Gutmark 76 YouTube channel Clash of the Champions Coastal Crush. And we will have more information on that big show in the upcoming episodes. As Scott Steiner tagged in. Through a spot two into the corner and a power slam by Scott Steiner. Steiner going for the cover on the top one and the kick out of the one by spot two. Hard into the turnbuckle goes spot two as Scott Steiner working with the camel plus when the referee was taken out inadvertently. Not there to count the possible submission. Now he is. Spot two fights his way out. Tell you that one match that has been signed for June 15th, Clash of the Champions 11, Coastal Crush, will be the, the Steiner brothers, Rick and Scott, and they will challenge Doom for the NWA World Tag Team Championship. A beautiful power slam maneuver by Scott Steiner on Fought 2, and Fought 2 gets up and makes a tag, and here comes the Samoan Savage. And the Samoan Savage with a big forearm takes down Scott, a big clothesline takes down Scott. And a beautiful drop kick by the Samoan Savage, 350 pounds, flying through the air like he weighed two pounds. Dropping knees to the back of Scott Steiner. Rick and Scott, they lost the World Tag Team Championship of Doom back at Wrestle War. And they will get their rematch for the World Tag Team Championship of Doom. Now 
Scott Steiner with a camel clutch locked in on the Samoan Savage. Samoan Savage trying to maneuver out of it. Slips behind the belt. Throws Scott Steiner face first to the mat. Take that by Samoan Savage. And this has been quite a back and forth contest thus far in the match. And a big DDT by the Samoan Savage on Scott Steiner. Not going for the pinfall. Surprised by that. As Scott Steiner is not moving, it seems like he would have been primed for the pinfall. And the referee having words with Rick Steiner, the Samoan Savage has let Scott Steiner back to his feet. Picks up Scott Steiner, going for the Samoan slam, and Scott Steiner backing out with a series of elbows. Throws the Savage hard into the turnbuckle. Scott may need to make a tag. Into the turnbuckle goes to Samoan Savage. Here's a tag. And here comes Rick. Double team maneuver by the Steiner brothers. Rick crashes down in the arm of the Samoan Savage. Into the ropes up and over the top rope goes the Samoan Savage. The newest member of the Four Horsemen, Rick Flair, in action again in our main event tonight. He will be taking on the Great Muda. And the Great Muda saves Sting from an attack by Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson just a few weeks ago, making his return to the NWA. And one would think that he could possibly be an ally for Sting as the war with the Four Horsemen has escalated. Counts up to six. The Samoan Savage back into the ring. And is met with a flurry of offense from Scott Steiner. Under the ropes goes the Samoan Savage. And there it is. The Frankensteiner takes the Savage up and over. Goes for the pinfall, but broken up by Fatu. And now all four men in the ring overhead. Pulling the police suplex by Rick. And he just took out Fatu. And there it is. Another Frankensteiner on the Savage. Goes for the cover one. Scott, the Steiner Brothers. A back and forth match that really could have gone either direction. Goes to Rick and Scott and they of course will prepare for their World Tag Team title opportunity June 15th at the Clash of the Champions 11 Coastal Crush. And I'm being informed, okay, I'm being informed that next here on World Championship Wrestling is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. So Paul Orndorff coming to WCW, I, I can't wait to see this, but he's in action next. Don't go away, we'll be right back after this quick timeout. Championship Wrestling, and there he is making his way to the ring, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. And I am uh, the crowd, a mixed reaction from the crowd. I'm not sure if they know to cheer or boo Mr. Wonderful. We don't know what his intentions are here in World Championship Wrestling. But here's a guy, rumors have been running rampant all over the media and I assure you that Mr. Wonderful Paul Lundorf is alive and well in the ring right now and he will be in action against Lieutenant James Earl Wright one half of the state patrol and the referee calling for the bell and away we go Mr. Wonderful with a big clothesline on right oh high knee lift on right and a big clothesline stuns James Earl Wright and a DDT by Orndorff takes right down. And Orndorff flexing off to the fans here at center stage. And picks up right, and a big right hand. Another clothesline takes down right. 
Again, the fans have mixed reaction. They're not sure what to do here. As Mr. Wonderful takes down James Earl Wright. I'm going to try and have a word with Mr. Wonderful at the conclusion of this match. And maybe he will give us some time to find out what he's doing here in World Championship Wrestling. But Orndorff picks up James Earl Wright. Has him set up for a scoop slam and power slam down to the mat. And James Earl Wright is in trouble. Mr. Wonderful picks up. James Earl Wright. Lining him up. Throws him into the turnbuckle. Owen Wright bounces off hard. Orndorff picks him up with a suplex. And Mr. Wonderful flexing as he holds James Earl Wright up in a suplex and down goes Wright. Orndorff setting up James Earl Wright. Wright coming back with an overhead belly to belly suplex. Beautiful maneuver on the part of James Earl Wright. And he's flashing some offense, but showboated and paid for it as Orndorff clotheslined him, nearly took his boots off. And Orndorff has Earl Wright again. And another slam down to the mat. And Mr. Wonderful may be putting away James Earl Wright. Picks him up. Setting him up, and here comes that patented pile driver. But Mr. Wonderful spikes him down. There are few in the business that do it better than Mr. Wonderful. And right there is a power dr pile driver, excuse me. And he goes for the cover, hooks the leg, but that is not necessary. Getting the three count. And your winner, Mr. Wonderful Paul Lorndorf. And here are some highlights from the contest as Mr. Wonderful with not one but two power slams on James Earl Wright. And here's that one offensive maneuver that Wright got in, that overhead belly-to-belly -belly suplex. But Orndorff pretty much making light work of James Earl Wright. We are going to send it down to my colleague Jim Ross who's going to have, and there it is, a spike pile driver by Mr. Wonderful. And nobody in the business does it better than Paul Orndorff. But we're going to have an interview right now, sending it down to Jim Ross, who's standing by with Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. So Mr. Wonderful Paul Lorndorff stating his intentions to help Sting battle the Four Horsemen. And we have another return to World Championship Wrestling. Somebody that we haven't seen in almost a year. And that is the JYD, the Junkyard Dog, making his return to World Championship Wrestling. He is in there with the Executioner. And the Junkyard Dog using his head, his biggest asset, and a big clothesline takes down the Executioner. So Mr. Wonderful Paul Lorndorf offering his friendship and help to Sting to battle the Four Horsemen against Sting is not here tonight. And JYD now working the Gladiator in the corner. And I'm sure Sting is watching at home and is happy to have an ally in his battle with the Four Horsemen. Running clothesline in the corner, and down goes the Executioner. The Junkyard Dog 
picks up the Executioner. And here it comes, a running power slam down to the mat. But he's not done with him yet. Picks up the Executioner. And there's a big headbutt, a series of headbutts. And down goes the Executioner. The JYD goes for the cover. And you can count to 10. This one is in the books. Your winner making a triumphant return to World Championship Wrestling, the Junkyard Dog. And here are some highlights from earlier in the contest. And we have not seen the Junkyard Dog in World Championship Wrestling in some time. But there's the series of headbutts that put this match in the win column for the Junkyard Dog. And we are going to send it down again to my colleague Jim Ross, standing by with the Junkyard Dog. So how about that? The Junkyard Dog and Mr. Wonderful Paul Woodworth both returning to World Championship Wrestling and both offering their services to Sting to help take on and battle the Four Horsemen. And here is another possible ally of Sting. He saved Sting from a beatdown of Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson just a few short weeks ago, and then teamed with Sting to take on Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson the week prior to Capital Combat. Of course, we thought Ric Flair was taken out backstage, but that was all a ruse. So Sting has competitors to battle the Four Horsemen and they're not the most common names. I mean, we wouldn't think the Great Moon and Sting would have teamed up until we saw it with our own eyes. And the Junkyard Dog and Mr. Wonderful Paul Wondorf coming back today, they did that on their own accord. They weren't asked by Sting to join World Championship Wrestling and join this fight. But I think that they saw what happened at Capital Combat and felt the, the need to interject. And here he is. The man we've been talking about all program long, Nature Boy Ric Flair, being led to the ring by Woman and Ole Anderson. And it looks like Woman got her way. She is in control and managing the Four Horsemen. And we have been told that with Ric Flair rejoining the original Four Horsemen, that Ole Anderson has gone back into semi-retirement and he will be advising the Four Horsemen going forward. So we will be seeing a lot more of Ole Anderson in the corner of the Horsemen going forward. And this match, I mean, these, there's no love loss between these two men. The Great Muda attacking Flair last year to Great American Bash. And their feud kind of kicked off the relationship between Flair and Sting to begin with. Hard into the turnbuckle goes Flair, the Great Moon in control. Except this time, the Great Moon is being cheered and Ric Flair being booed. And Flair now chopping away at the Great Moon of the former world television champion. And Flair with a big chop stuns Muda. Another chop coming. Oh man, and down goes Muda. Ric Flair 
I mean, what a setup this was. He was in the ring last week with Sting against Tully and Arn, and then Sting was battling the entire match by himself. And Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson were picking parts of Sting and doing damage. And every time Flair tried to get into the ring to break up the maneuver, the referee held back Flair, enabling more dirty work to be done by Tully and Arn on Sting. And during the course of that match, they attacked Sting's neck, his back, his arm, and his legs, every major body part. And then when Sting finally was able to make the tag, Flair steps in the ring, knocked Sting off the apron and proceeded to beat him with a baseball bat as Flair goes for the cover on Muda only getting a kind of walk. And again, the question that I have is why the big ruse? Why the trick? If Ric Flair wanted to reform the Four Horsemen with Tully Blanchard, Arn Anderson, and Barry Windham, why not just tell Sting, hey, our, our relationship, it's, it's, it's not where I need it to be. And I'm gonna read, you know, why, why go through the whole charade of, I don't know. These are questions that I have, and I hope that we can get the answers. But we're gonna try and have a word with Ric Flair next week. And Sting, of course, will make his first comments next week as well. But the championship committee is trying to keep Ric Flair and Sting separated. In the meantime, and Flair lining up the great Muda, and there's that patent knee drop, and across the forehead goes Ric Flair. Going for the cover, the great Muda down. Referee counts one, two, and three. No, a kick up by the great Muda. Oh, that was close. Ric Flair is definitely had the pace that he needs in this match, because great Muda can fly and be so quick in the ring, but Ric Flair has slowed this down to the pace is comfortable for him. Goes for the cover, one, two, and again a kick out by the Great Muda. And with each and every kick out, it exerts more strength and more energy, and that will just benefit Ric Flair in the long run. He is the kind of wrestler that gets better as the match goes on, charging in the close line, and down goes the Great Muda. And Ole Anderson very happy at ringside as Ric Flair moves to the crowd at center stage. But Muda trying to fight back. Has Flair up, and a pile driver down goes Muda, or down goes Flair by Muda. Excuse me, and Muda trying to make a comeback, spitting the green mist. And a big chop against Flair. Flair chops back, exchanging blows. And a clothesline by Muda, another clothesline by Muda. Flair dumped to the Savannah kick, takes down Flair. The great Muda back in control. Picks up Flair. And slams him into the turnbuckle and slams Flair down to the mat. And Muda having words with Flair. I'm not even sure the great Muda speaks English. But rams his head face first into the mat. And the great Muda in control. And again, Muda having words for Flair. And a big kick takes over Flair. Muda going back to work. And a big chop across the throat. Now a front face lock by Muda. Now working the arm of Ric Flair is the great Muda. And setting up Flair could it be another power driver. And it is! Spiked down to the mat. A little bit of payback maybe for Sting. As it was three power drivers last week to put Sting away. And now Muda working the neck of Nature Boy Ric Flair. And again, I don't think Sting's the kind of guy that reached out to the great Muda and saying, hey, help help my battle, help fight my fight for me. I don't think Sting reached out to, uh, to Junkyard Dog or Paul Orndorff either. I just think that the kind of character that Sting is, he's able to have people help him because of the good guy that he is. And Flair now with a series of chops to the great Muda. And Flair has regained control in this matchup. On the outside is the great Muda. And Flair following them out. These two men battling on the floor. And a big chop by Flair. Oh man, you can hear it from up here. Oh, and throws the great Muda into the steps. Three. The referee 
has begun to count. And again, Flair throwing the Great Muda into the steps at ringside. And Flair is back in the ring. He will take a count on victory, but wait, Ole picking up the, the Great Muda. Ole throwing Muda back into the ring, and Flair is going to go for the cover and possibly win this match. But the referee out of position counts one, two, and a kick out of two by the Great Muda. And Flair may have had him, but the referee was out of position, and that benefited the Great Muda. But the Great Muda trying to fight back, picks up Flair, and the backbreaker, and down goes Flair. That is usually the precursor to the moonsault. But the Great Muda dragging Flair to the center of the ring, he'll go for the cover. Will he get the pinfall? One, two, and a kick out of two by Flair. And Ric Flair almost pinned there by the backbreaker. And the Great Muda now, ooh, Flair trying to fight back. And another chop takes down Muda. Oh man, Muda in trouble, and Flair setting up the Great Muda with, oh, and here it comes, the figure four leg lock. He turns, twists, and drops, and down goes Muda. In the figure four, can the Great Muda escape? The Great Muda trying to turn it over, he's trying to work his way out. Can the Great Muda escape the maneuver? And the Great Muda trying and does, he turns it over. But the damage may be done to the leg of the Great Muda. Both men staggering, and a drop kick by the Great Muda takes down Flair. Muda climbing the top rope. Could it be the moonsault? Oh, but Flair getting back to his feet. Muda leaps and misses, an elbow drop off the top rope. And Muda going for a kick, blocked by Muda. And now Muda with a single leg crab with Ric Flair. Will Flair submit? Flair talking and communicating to the referee. And is able to turn over and kick off the great Muda. So both men working the other's leg. Oh, but Flair runs right into an elbow. And now Muda again takes down Flair by the leg. A new tactic we're seeing by the great Muda. As he throws Flair into the turnbuckle hard and down goes Flair. And now the great Muda turning over Flair with a submission maneuver. The referee asking Flair if he wants to submit. Flair face first to the mat, able to shift his weight. Oh, and an elbow to the side of the head jacks the great Muda. And another chop, and a series of chops, and Ric Flair back in control. And he's setting up the great Muda. Takes him down and going again for the figure four leg lock, and down goes Muda, and here it is. The second time in the matchup. Oh, and Flair really has it locked in this time. Flair has it locked in. I don't think the Muda, Great Muda can escape. He's, he's not submitting. Great Muda fighting for everything he can. Can the Great Muda get out of it this time? And again, the Great Muda mustering up enough strength to reverse the maneuver. But it, oh, the damage is done. Great Muda's in trouble. He is staggering and Flair beats him to the punch, literally. Knocks down the Great Muda. And now an elbow drop and Mo Muda's in trouble. He is slowly moving, but he is definitely favoring that one leg. And Flair takes him down again for the third time. A figure four locked in. Can the Great Muda escape a third time? Oh, he's in pain. He's riveting on the mat. And he's forced to tap in your winner, Nature Boy Ric Flair. He was able to escape the first two figure four leg locks, but not the third. And the Great Muda is not moving. The Great Muda is writhing in pain on the mat. He is not moving. He is in pain. We need to get some medical attention down for the Great Muda. He may seriously be injured here. Here are some highlights from earlier in the contest, and there are some ringside doctors consulting the Great Muda right now, including a translator. But the Great Muda is not moving. And your winner, Nature Boy Ric Flair, the leader of the Four Horsemen. 
While fans, it's been an exciting show. Mr. Wonderful Paul Lorndorff and the Junkyard Dog have returned to assist Sting in his battle with Ric Flair and the Four Horsemen. So it looks like Sting won't be going at it alone. We'll have more information on the condition of the Great Luna next week, and we will hear from Sting next week as well. Fans, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Got Mark 76 this week, 1990. Goodbye, everybody.